Hello and welcome back to Rez Gaming and a new episode of Things You Didn't Know in Elden Ring. Today we have some very important discussions to do with lore we've been speaking about recently and some more really interesting strange mechanical interactions that are definitely not intentional but pretty cool while you can use them. As always a huge thank you to everyone that gets involved in this series, making comments and having discussions. We're now coming up to episode 50 of this long running series and as always it's largely down to you guys and helping me look into different things. So thank you and without any further ado let's begin today's episode. We begin today's episode by returning to that previous topic, to do with the sacred god of rot, the outer god of rot, and its potential emissary or enforcer that it sent here. The scorpion stinger, quite literally a relic of a sealed outer god. There are other relics in this game, such as this one, the sacred relic sword, which we know is made of a quote unquote god. Radigan slash Marika's body forms this weapon, as well as the finger slayer blade, another form or person turned into a weapon. This relic, though, is crafted from a sealed outer god. And we were talking about how it's literally called the Scorpion Stinger. And so what this is, that sealed outer god, is a part of that outer god. Whether it's an enforcer or literally the outer god itself, this little piece of a Scorpion Stinger is part of what that would have been. Let's say it was an enforcer, like, say, the Elden Beast itself. This weapon is fashioned from a piece of that kind of form. The enforcer, if that's what it was, of the god of rot, was it a giant scorpion? Well, it was Spark Odachi that talked about how it might not have been a scorpion, but it could have been a manticore. Manticores are legendary animals that have the head of, say, a man, or with horns potentially, the body of a lion, the tail of a dragon, or scorpion. So, a manticore quite known for having multiple creatures and aspects to it, and potentially with the tail and tip of a scorpion stinger. Let's take a look at the weapon again. We have a scorpion stinger, but then we don't have the rest of a scorpion tail or scorpion features. We have something completely different. We have this cross guard and weapon that ends with a sort of ornament, the head of another creature, not a scorpion, but potentially a wolf or potentially even a lion. Spark suggests that a beast with a stinger and wings and lion body would fit pretty well in this world and it was Rory Fallen who brought up the fact that well a manticore has been in the Souls games before. The Sanctuary Guardian in the Dark Souls 1 DLC The Abyss of Artorias. The first boss when you enter that DLC immediately thrown at you is a manticore. This footage is from my original Dark Souls 1 playthrough over like 10 years ago, so I apologize for the quality, but here we have a manticore. With go or ram-like horns, a lion's head, wings, and that tail, which in this specific case, I would say looks like a scorpion's tail more than anything else. So, I quite like this theory, especially with how they've done it before. The thing is, if we really look at that ornament at the end of the weapon, this does not look like a lion's head to me. That very clearly looks like a wolf's head, in my opinion. And that symbology is shown throughout the whole of Elden Ring. The shadows that, you know, follow Empyreans or other gods, working as their enforcers or bodyguards. Wolves are very important creatures. In this world, it could be that the manticore takes on the form of a wolf rather than a lion in that way. But I really like the theory that this enforcer or outer god whatever it was, this relic is made up of its body, representing the manticore aspect of it with the scorpion stinger and the wolf body. And I like that theory better than I like the idea of it just being a giant scorpion. It's a lot more interesting and quite plausible. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But now let's move on to our next thing in the same location, brought because of this topic to do the scorpion stinger. And it comes from Babao Sengor, which I really hope I pronounced that correctly. He talks about the big statue in the Lake of Rot. Now what we look at down here is the location of the scorpion stinger as you walk through here you work through here it's a lot of enemies to deal with and even if you stop to enjoy the view and this interesting aspect of them worshiping what is the scorpion stinger in a chest down there it's that you never really stop to take the time to to look up and highlight that giant statue maybe the biggest i've ever seen in Elden ring in fact until this comment i never looked at this i was completely unaware that this even existed it is an absolutely colossal statue right above the scorpion stinger and represents this faction, this worship of this faction and the outer god of rot. This, in my opinion, is surely a very important statue 
to this faction and one that I have completely just missed that's staring me right in the face because it's enshrouded in that kind of red cloud. Babao suggests that this is a huge statue of a woman that's covered by fog so it's hard to really make out the details. I'm not sure. This feature, this, this statue is so hard to make out. There's no way for me to clear this up by any normal in-game means that I'm aware of. So I can't quite make out the details of this statue, but I would be very interested to see what this actually looks like, who this is, what this represents. This could be some obviously relevant and important lore to the faction that worships the Outer God of Rot and that whole Rot faction itself. If you guys have any details on this or thoughts about who this statue could be, let me know. Moving on from the interesting lore discussion, let's talk about some strange mechanical interactions that remain in the game to this day. Starting with one from Lucifer, who talks about how they recently discovered a strange interaction between the spell Terra Magica, a self buffer to increase your magic damage while standing in the rune, after using the Ash of War found on Golden Epitaph. The last rite's Ash of War is basically used to kill those that live in death permanently. It's a pretty cool Ash of War with a cool buff, and we've talked about this weapon in particular because of some certain lore details to do with it. But apparently while you're buffed up with that, if you use Terra Magica, you start to hurt yourself. You can see how I'm taking a physical kind of reaction. The health bar, well, yes, very minorly, it is being drained. By standing in this sorcery, I am taking damage. The very idea and concept of this Ash of War is to make it so those that live in death are damaged permanently killed, removed, purified by this effect. So am I being counted as like an undead while standing on this rune? If I step out of it, of course, I immediately stop taking the damage. As soon as I put it back down again, taking the damage again. And it's like a, a physical bump that I'm taking. I'm taking a direct hit. It's just that the damage I'm taking is obviously very, very minor. But you can see I'm taking two hit points per tick of that and presumably if I stand in it long enough it will kill me. So it's a very strange interaction, surely not intended and one that I'm happy to highlight in this series. Great find Lucifer, very interesting. Next for strange mechanical interactions we come back to the tree spear. Thanks to Sam4701952 just to specifically call you out for highlighting this. This is really cool and I'm really glad to know about it. It's really strange. So what we did is we talked about this spear, the tree spear, and how if you buff it up it kind of creates a strange interaction with other weapons. As you can see it's sort of the VFX effect is applying even when I'm on a different weapon and it's also kind of hanging out strangely at a distance from me. It's quite a strange interaction. Sam discovered by playing around with this concept that it works not just on that, but various weapons. All you have to do is take the tree spear and then put another weapon in the same armament slot. So when you swap to it, the effect, the VFX, sort of passes over and check this out. So I'm going to buff up, I'm going to swap to a simple dagger. This causes the similar effect to what we saw before, but it's kind of making the dagger glow golden, which is quite a neat effect. And then we have that golden line, much like before, but, you know, moving in a different way, attached to the weapon, just giving it kind of strange extra range. But now let's try another weapon. Let's try a katana. What's happening here is that we're not getting that strange line at a distance. It's just made the katana this unique glowing gold holy weapon, which looks really, really cool. Let's try it with a different weapon type that's a lot more different, like a flail with a family head here. We again don't have the strange line moving away. We now have this holy weapon, the triple golden holy heads of the family heads. Quite a cursed concept. Not exactly sure this was what it was meant to be used for. One of my favorite weapons to look at this effect with is easily the Cinque Dia, which is, of course, the five finger dagger. Check this out. Not only do we have the strange lines again, but the weapon itself is really cool with this golden hue. You can really get a proper look at those five fingers that come out from the cross guard. Looks really cool with this holy glow to it. And it even works with bows if you want some golden holy bows. Check it out. I've got like a golden magical bow that's firing holy golden fire arrows, which is awesome. It's a strange interaction, clearly not intended, but it does allow for some really cool combinations for different visuals for weapons. I really like it. We should get some screenshots and thumbnails and so on because surely at some 
some point this will be removed. Using this effect, we can make ourselves a holy version of the Dark Moon Blade with the Moonlight Greatsword effect active. It does overlap it though. So if you do use any Ash of War, it will overlap this effect. So kind of not so useful when you're using an Ash of War that has its own VFX uh, over it, but a pretty cool trick. And it's one that I'm sure won't last forever. So thank you for that, Sam. Great spot. Next up, and finally, our last thing to talk about, just a little discussion and follow-up to do with bows and arrows and interesting mechanics that could exist with this kind of neglected weapon type. Briefly, we were talking about the very unique designs of arrows. Very intricate designs with some cool flair to them and references to their designs at that. Particularly cool are the serpent arrows, which are literally serpents with two tails and apparently serve certain assassins so they're like living creatures, these arrows. We talked about how some of these could actually be super suitable melee weapons. It's not like these arrows are small, too small to not use as like a sword or even a dagger with quick swipes. And then say the great arrows, they could be used as a literal like spear attack around great bows. That would be really useful because great bows are very slow and vulnerable when you're up close, giving them a sort of quick melee attack or even certain combos. That'd be awesome, even if it was simple stuff. It is a big disappointment that there aren't more bows and interesting bow combat mechanics. Now take take the black bow here. This is a not a short bow, but a long bow and has a short bow barrage effect, allowing it to fire very quickly, which is cool and certainly an interesting mechanic. Then we have things like the musical bow, which is quite cute that plays a note when you fire it, but beyond that doesn't do anything mechanical at all. And very interesting bows like again, the serpent bow with this interesting design and poison theme. But there aren't really interesting combat mechanics to use beyond these very basic things. As many people brought up in the comments, it was Simon's bow blade in Bloodborne that was referenced so much. A transforming bow used for range attacks and melee because it could transform into sort of a curved sword from melee fighting. When in bow form, it actually did have some arrow melee attacks. You could attack with a sort of offhand melee swing using an arrow as simple and as dry as of an attack that was. They have done it before in the series though, given a bow actual melee and a variety of combat mechanics. It's entirely possible then that we could see a bow or new bows or in addition to this weapon type to actually add interesting mechanics. You know, there was the pizza cutter in Bloodborne, which is a spinning chainsaw style transforming weapon. And that came back in the form of Giza's wheel in Elden Ring. So I think it's possible. My question for you guys then in that follow up is what kind of mechanics would you like to see for bows to make them a bit more interesting beyond just shooting, the Ash of War, and maybe some quick jump attacks that you see people use maybe in PvP? What kind of melee attacks should a bow have? What would work based on how bows can be used up close in real world? But there you have it, another episode of Things You Didn't Know in Elden Ring down again. Let me know what you think about the different discussions today, the Scorpion Stinger and its potential Outer God Envoy or Enforcer. Would you say it was indeed a giant scorpion, or do you like the Manticore theme that we've been talking about? Who or what is that giant statue in reference to that faction? And as always, if you know any cool, say, lore or mechanical things we've not spoke about or shown in the series so far, then please let me know in the comments. I'll of course give you a shout out as we discuss things in the episode. Thanks for all the support with the series as always though, but until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.